Why does enlarged prostate cause ED? Stay tuned and find out. So what does BPH or enlarged prostate has to do with ED? We'll dive into it on this episode. So the prostate gland is the gland that is at the base of your penis that wraps around the urethra or it's where you pee. And normally it's the size of a ping pong ball or a walnut, but it can get enlarged as you get older. And sometimes it can get so big that it compresses the urethra or the tube where urine comes out. And that's what gives the symptoms of an enlarged prostate, like urinary frequency where you urinate a lot and incomplete urination. We'll dive into that a little bit later, but the function of the prostate gland is that it produces semen in the seminal vesicles and that the semen is what you ejaculate. And when a man gets older, the prostate is somewhat enlarges and it's actually kind of correlate with your testosterone level as well. It's recommended men over 50 get their PSA check as well as their prostate check annually. Now, how do you know if you have an enlarged prostate? It's when you need to urinate frequently, like almost every hour, every two hours, and you urinate a lot at night, like three to four times, it's disrupting your sleep. And when you do urinate, you start and you stop, and your urine stream is not as strong as it was when you were in your 20s. And then when you do urinate, you start to dribble. And then if you do urinate, you stop. And then you have to come back in about half an hour later and go again. In addition, sometimes men can have increased urinary tract infection, can have blood in the urine, and sometimes they can't even urinate. However, interestingly, how large your prostate is has no bearing on how severe your symptom can be. Now, the prevalence of enlarged prostate rises with age. According to a study that was done in the 90s, it shows that 24% of men between the age of 40 to 49 has BPH and 36% of men aged from 60 to 69. I want to kind of talk briefly on what are the contributing factors that cause an enlarged prostate. And we know that we see that more as men get older. We also notice that as men get older that the testosterone level drop as well. Don't know any type of correlation on there, but what I notice is that when you do have enlarged prostate, you go to the bathroom a lot and you're not sleeping well. There's also studies have shown that because of the increased neurotransmitter called adrenergic transmitter that come from being stressed on the sympathetic nervous system, what it does, it, it leads to an expression in the bladder that actually interfere with urination, interestingly. So I guess when you're stressed, you're producing this neurotransmitter, which affect the bladder, which then can interfere with voiding. So the other thing too, is that you can have a hypothesis that said perhaps less blood flow from the groin area to the penis can also interfere with blood flow as well, because one studies have shown that men with BPH and ED on the Doppler ultrasound it shows a decreased blood flow from the arteries or condition called arterial insufficiency. However, the main thing that connect BPH and ED is the treatment for BPH. It's the medication that really contribute to the ED. Just know that BPH or enlarged prostate is not cancer. It's benign, but it's the treatment that supposedly stop the enlargement of the prostate that contribute to the ED. Like for instance, finasteride or Proscar is anti-testosterone. It blocks the formation of dihydrotestosterone or DHT. However, it has been linked to ED in 3.7% of men and decreased libido in 3% of men using it. Another medicine called alpha blocker or Flomax commonly, or Rapaflow, however, can improve symptoms of BPH and can lower the sexual side effects. So sometimes Flomax is preferred use over Poscar because it doesn't affect ED 
as much. And of course, when you have a large prostate that is symptomatic, that you can't sleep or it's very weak urine, there's a procedure called transurethral resection of the prostate or sometimes TERP, and that is really making the prostate smaller. But in a small percentage, we don't know how much can also contribute to ED as well. In summary, it's not the BPH directly affected. It could be indirectly causing more stress. It could be obstructing your urine flow. But the biggest factor is mainly the medication that you take for BPH that contribute to symptoms of ED. I hope you liked this episode. I would appreciate it if you subscribe, comment, and like, and share this with someone you think may benefit from this information. And follow the link below where I give you a free book on the five common mistakes men make when facing ED and that no modern man that you can be happy, live a happier life and be content. And I'll see you in the next episode. Are you struggling and frustrated in finding a solution for ED? Well, I have just the thing for you. It's called the Modern Man Club led by yours truly, Dr. Ann. Together, we're redefining male sexuality and embracing a holistic approach to overcoming ED without medication or surgery. I will provide a protective environment for a community and proven strategy to overcoming ED. It is a safe place, expert coaching by me and my team. We provide holistic approach to overcoming ED and an empowering community of men with ED supporting one another and lots and lots of educational resources. Visit mensexualityclub.com at the link here on my right and connect with us and reclaim control over your sexual health. I'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Sexual Health for Men podcast. If you love this episode, then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you post. And be sure to tag me and let me know why you like this episode and what you like to hear in the future. That will help me know what's great for you. And I would love to give you the most incredible free gift designed to help you improve performance quickly. Go to my website at sexualhealthformenpodcast.com to get the book, The Five Common Costly Mistakes Men Make When Facing ED. I would appreciate it if you subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, and just know that you can have sexual vitality for life. I appreciate you. Until next time.